Hi friends, and thank you for joining us in this nightly read-along. Don't forget to ask your parent to subscribe so you don't miss any future chapters. Now here's Miss Kate with tonight's chapters. The Westing Game, Chapter 5, 16 Heirs The marbled sky lay heavy on the gray Great Lake when Grace Winslow Wexler parked her car in the Westing driveway and strode up the walk ahead of her daughters. Her husband had refused to come, but no matter. Recalling family gossip about a rich uncle, maybe it was a great uncle, anyway, his name was Sam, Grace had convinced herself that she was the rightful heir. Jake was Jewish, so he could not possibly be related to Samuel W. Westing. I can't imagine what became of my silver cross, she said, fingering the gold link necklace under her mink stole as she paused to appraise the big house. You know, Angela, we could have the wedding right here. Turtle, where are you wandering off to now? The letter said, never mind. Turtle preferred not to explain how she knew the library could be entered from the French doors on the lawn. The front door was opened by Crow. Although the Sunset Tower's cleaning woman always wore black, here it reminded Grace Wexler to dab her eyes with a lace handkerchief. This was a house of mourning. The silent crow helped Angela with her coat and nodded approval of her blue velvet dress with white collar and cuffs. I'll keep my furs with me, Grace said. She did not want to be taken for one of the poor relatives. Seems rather chilly in here. Turtle, too, complained of the chill, but her mother tugged off her coat to reveal a fluffy, ruffly pink party dress, two sizes too large and four inches too long. It was one of Angela's hand-me-downs. Place it anywhere, the lawyer said, without glancing from the envelopes he was sorting at the head of the long library table. Mrs. Wexler took the chair to his right and motioned to her favorite. Angela sat down next to her mother, removed a trousseau towel from her large tapestry shoulder bag, and took up embroidery in the monogram D. Slumped in the third chair, Turtle pretended she had never seen this paneled library with its bare and dusty shelves. Suddenly, she sat up with a start. An open coffin draped in bunting rested on a raised platform at the far corner of the room. In it lay the dead man, looking exactly as she had found him, except now he was dressed in the costume of Uncle Sam, including the tall hat. Between his waxy hands, folded across his chest, lay her mother's silver cross. Grace Wexler was too busy greeting the next heir to notice. Why, Dr. D, I had no idea you'd be here, but of course you'll soon be a member of the family. Come, sit next to your bride-to-be. Turtle, you'll have to move down. D. Denton Deer always in a hurry, brushed a quick kiss on Angela's cheek. He was still wearing his hospital whites. I didn't know this was a pajama party, Turtle said, relinquishing her chair and stomping to the far end of the table. The next heir, short and round, entered timidly, her lips pressed together in an impish smile that curved up to what must be pointed ears under her straight-cut, steely hair. Hello, Mrs. Baumbach, Angela said. I don't think you've met my fiancé, Denton Deer. You're a lucky man, Mr. Deer. Doctor, dear, Mrs. Wexler corrected her, puzzled by the dressmaker's presence. Yes, of course, I'm so sorry. Sensing that she was unwelcome at this end of the room, Flora Baumbach walked on. Hi, mind if I sit next to you? I promise not to pull your braid. That's okay. Turtle was hunched over the table, her small chin resting between her crossed arms. From there, she could see everything except the coffin. Grace Wexler dismissed the next heir with an audible tongue click. That distasteful little man didn't even have the sense to remove his silly aviator's cap. Tsk! And what in heaven's name was he doing here? The delivery boy shouted, Let's give a cheer! Otis Amber is here! Turtle laughed. Flora Baumbach tittered, and Grace Wexler again clicked her tongue. Tsk! Doug Hu and his father entered silently, but Sandy gave a hearty hi and a cheery wave. He wore his doorman's uniform, but unlike Otis Amber, carried his hat in his hand. Grace Winsler Wexler was no longer surprised at the odd assortment of heirs. Household workers all, or former employees, she decided. The rich always reward their servants in their wills. And her Uncle Sam was a generous man. Aren't your parents coming? She asked the older Theodorakis boy as he wheeled his brother into the library. They weren't invited, Theo replied. It's soon, Chris announced. What did he say? He said it's snowing, Theo and Flora Baumbach explained at the same time. The heirs watched helplessly as the invalid's thin frame was suddenly torn and twisted by convulsions. Only the dressmaker rushed to his side. I know, I know, she simpered. You were trying to tell us about the itsy-bitsy snowflings. Theo moved her away. My brother is not an infant, and he's not retarded, so please, no more baby talk. Blinking away tears, Flora Baumbach returned to her seat. The elfin smile still pained, painted on her pained face. Some stared at the afflicted child with morbid fascination, but most turned away. They didn't want to see. 
Pyramidal tract involvement, Denton Deer whispered, trying to impress Angela with his diagnosis. Angela, her face a mirror to the boy's suffering, grabbed her tapestry rag and hurried out of the room. Why, hello, Judge Ford. Proud of her liberalism, Grace Windsor Wexler stood and leaned over the table to shake the black woman's hand. She must be here in some legal capacity, or maybe her mother was a household maid, but one thing... But of one thing, Grace was certain. J.J. Ford could no more be related to Samuel W. Westing than Mr. Who. Can't we get started? Mr. Who asked, hoping to get back in time to watch the football game on television. I must return to my restaurant, he announced loudly. Sunday is our busy day, but we are still accepting reservations. Shin Hu's restaurant on the fifth floor of Sunset Tower is specializing in... Doug tugged at his father's sleeve. Not here, Dad. Not in front of the dead. What dead? Mr. Who had not noticed the open coffin. Now he did. Oh, the lawyer lawyer explained that several heirs had not yet arrived. My wife is not coming, said Mr. Who. Grace said Dr. Wexler was called away on an emergency operation. An emergency Packers game in Green Bay, Turtle confided to Flora Baumbach, who scrunched up her shoulders and tittered behind a plump hand. Then we are still waiting for one, no, two more, the lawyer said, fumbling with his papers, his hands shaking under the strict scrutiny of the judge. Judge Ford had recognized E.J. Plum. Several months ago, he had argued before her court, bumbling to the point of incompetence. Why, she wondered, was a young, inexperienced attorney chosen to handle an estate of such importance? Come to think of it, what was she doing here? Curiosity? Perhaps, but what about the rest of them, the other tenants of Sunset Towers? Don't anticipate, Josie Joe. Wait for Sam Westing to make the first move. Light footsteps were heard in the hall. It was only Angela, who blushed and, hugging her tapestry bag close to her body, returned to her seat. The heirs waited. Some chatted with neighbors. Some looked up at the gilt ceiling. Some studied the pattern of the oriental rug. Judge Ford stared at the table at Theo Theodorakis's hand, a calloused hand, a healed cut, the the shiny slash of a burn on the deep bronze skin. She lowered her hands to her lap. His Greek skin was darker than her black skin. Thump, thump, thump. Someone was coming, or were there two of them? In came Crow. Eyes lowered, without a word, she sat down next to Otis Amber. A dark cloud passed from her face as she eased off a tight shoe under the table. Thump, thump, thump. The last expected air arrived. Hello, everybody. Sorry I'm late. I haven't quite adjusted to this. Sadell Pulaski waved a gaily painted crutch in the air, tottered, and set it down quickly with another thump. This crutch. Crutch. What a horrible word. But I guess I'll have to get used to it. She pursed her bright red mouth, painted to a fullness beyond the narrow line of her lips, trying to suppress a smile of triumph. Everyone was staring. She knew they would notice. What happened, Pulaski? Otis Amber asked. Did you pull Turtle's braid again? More likely, she visited Wexler, the foot butcher, Sandy suggested. Sadell was pleased to hear someone come to her defense with a loud click of the tongue. She had not even blinked a false eyelash at those offensive remarks. Poise, they call it. It's really nothing, she reported bravely, just some sort of wasting disease. But pity me not, I shall live out my remaining time enjoying each precious day to the full. Thump, thump, thump. The secretary kept to the side of the room, avoiding the oriental rug that might cushion the thump of her purple-striped crutch as she made her way to the end of the table. Her exaggerated hips were even more exaggerated by the wavy stripes on, of white on her purple dress. Purple waves, Turtle thought. Denton Deer almost fell off his chair, leaning back to follow the most unusual case. First, she favored her left leg, then her right leg. What is it? whispered Mrs. Wexler. The intern did not have the least notion, but he had to say something. Traveling sporadic myositis, he pronounced quickly and glanced at Angela. Her eyes remained on her embroidery. The lawyer stood, documents in hand, and cleared his throat several times. Grace Windsor Wexler, her chin tilted in the regal pose of an heiress, gave him her full attention. One minute, please. Sadell Pulaski propped her purple and white striped crutch against the table, then removed a shorthand pad and pencil from her handbag. Thank you for waiting. You may begin. Chapter 6. The Westing Will My name, the young lawyer began, is Edgar Jennings Plum. Although I never had the honor of meeting Samuel W. Westing, for some reason yet unexplained, I was appointed executor of this will found adjacent to the body of the deceased. Let me assure you that I have examined the documents at hand as thoroughly as possible in the short time available. I have verified these signatures to be those of Samuel W. Westing and his two witnesses, Julian R. Eastman, President and Chief Executive Officer of Westing Paper Products Corporation, and Sidney Sykes, M.D., Coroner of Westing County. 
Although the will you are about to hear may seem eccentric, I pledge my good name and reputation on its legality. Breathless with suspense, the heirs stared pop-eyed at Edgar Jennings Plum, who now coughed into his fist, now cleared his throat, now rustled papers, and now, at last, began to read aloud from the Westing will. I, Samuel W. Westing, resident of Westing County in the fair state of Wisconsin in the great and glorious United States of America, being of sound mind and memory, do hereby declare this to be my last will and testament. First, I returned to live among my friends and my enemies. I came home to seek my heir, aware that in doing so I faced death. And so I did. Today I have gathered together my nearest and dearest, my sixteen nieces and nephews. What? Sit down, Grace Windsor Wexler. The lawyer stammered an apology to the still standing woman. I was only reading, I mean, those are Mr. Westing's words. If it's any comfort to you, Mrs. Wexler, Judge Ford remarked with biting dignity. I am just as appalled by our purported relationship. Oh, I didn't mean. Hey, Angela, Turtle called the length of the table. It's against the law to marry that doctor to be. He's your cousin. D. Denton Deer, patting Angela's hand in his best bedside manner, pricked his finger on her embroidery needle. I can't tell who said what with this chatter, Sidel Pulaski complained. Would you read that again, Mr. Lawyer? Today I have gathered together my nearest and dearest, my sixteen nieces and nephews, sit down Grace Windsor Wexler, to view the body of your Uncle Sam for the last time. Tomorrow its ashes will be scattered to the four winds. Second, I, Samuel W. Westing, hereby swear that I did not die of natural causes. My life was taken from me by one of you. Ooh! Chris's arms flailed the air. His accusing finger pointed here. No, there. It pointed everywhere. His exaggerated motions acted out the confusion shared by all but one of the heirs as they looked around at the stunned faces of their neighbors to confirm what they had heard. Rereading her notes, Sidel Pulaski now uttered a small shriek. Eee! Murder? Does that mean Westing was murdered? Sandy asked the heir on his left. Crow turned away in silence. Does that mean murder? He asked the heir on his right. Murder? Of course it means murder. Sam Westing was murdered, Mr. Who replied. Either that or he ate once too often in that greasy spoon coffee shop. Theo resented Who's slur on the family business. It was murder, all right, and the will says the murderer is one of us. He glared at the restaurant owner. Have the police been notified of the change? Judge Ford asked the lawyer. Plum shrugged. I presume they will perform an autopsy. The judge shook her head in dismay. Autopsy? Westing was already embalmed. Tomorrow he would be cremated. The police are helpless. The culprit is far too cunning to be apprehended for this dastardly deed. Oh my! Flora Baumbach clapped a hand to her mouth on hearing dastardly. First murder, now a swear word. I alone know the name. Now it is up to you. Cast out the sinner. Let the guilty rise and confess. Amen, said Crow. Third, who among you is worthy to be the Westing heir? Help me. My soul shall roam restlessly until that one is found. The estate is at a crossroads. The heir who wins the windfall will be the one who finds the ashes, the doorman shouted. Some tittered to relieve the unbearable tension. Some cast him a reproachful glance. Grace Wexler clicked her tongue and Sidel Pulaski shhed. It was just a joke, Sandy tried to explain. You know, ashes get scattered to the winds, so the one that wins the windfall gets, oh, never mind. Fourth, hail to thee, O land of opportunity. You have made me, the son of poor immigrants, rich, powerful, and respected. So take stock in America, my heirs, and sing in praise of this generous land. You too may strike it rich, who dares to play the Westing game. Game? What game? Turtle wanted to know. No matter, Judge Ford said, rising to leave. This is either a cruel trick or the man was insane. Fifth, sit down, your honor, and read this letter. Read the letter this brilliant young attorney will now hand over to you. It was uncanny. Several heads turned toward the coffin, but Westing's eyes were shut forever. The brilliant young attorney fumbled through a stack of papers, felt his pockets, and finally found the letter in his briefcase. Aren't you going to open it? Theo asked the judge as the judge resumed her seat and put the sealed envelope in her purse. No need. Sam Westing could afford to buy a dozen certificates of sanity. The poor are crazy, the rich just eccentric, Mr. Who said bitterly. Are you implying, sir, that the medical profession is corrupt? Denton Deer challenged. Shh. Before you proceed to the game room, there will be one minute of silent prayer for your good old Uncle Sam. Flora Baumbach was the only heir to cry. Crow was the only one to pray. By the time Sidel Pulaski could assume a pose of reverence, the minute was up. <laughs>